Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. John T. John. He is our senior consultant and HOD in Lowood Hospital. And as you all know, many of us young orthopods are trained under him. So, and he's a wonderful teacher. So I think we should really make this session uh, interactive and try to clear all our doubts. Uh, and, and uh, you know, we can uh, have a very great session. Welcoming you, sir. Thank you, Balu, for the introduction. So we'll have a, a one topic we'll discuss for half an hour, and we'll have two or three small uh, topics. You can interrupt in between if you want to uh, ask something, because I will be asking questions. Uh, uh, so uh, be ready to answer. So this is a, a 23-year-old female a student. She is a dancer, and this is the uh, clinical picture. Rahul, what do you think? This is a knee joint. You can unmute yourself, sir. Rahul. Don't worry. You can make mistakes. This is yeah, the best yeah, no to make mistakes. So no feel free to interact. And it's, it's actually... Rahul, can you introduce yourself from where are you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I can see the swelling over the lower thigh. Yeah. Or oh, the medial side, I guess, if it is the right side. Yeah. Uh, it's actually not on the medial side. So it's a lateral side. Okay, okay sir. Yes, sir. So anything, it's a knee, knee. You know, basically we are talking today about the knee. Okay, sir. So he'll, she gives history of frequent falls of three years to three years. Pain of two years in the knee joint. History wise, uh, she is a 23 year old female with uh, frequent falls while running and dancing three years. Instability of the knee, lack of confidence to dance. And diffuse aching anterior knee pain of two years now. Aggravated on going up and down the stairs. Okay. Knee swelling occasionally. So Rahul would would which area will be the the problematic area in the knee from the history? Yes, sir. Uh, so a patient will be having a, a lig ligament tear, and it could be the uh, if uh, since she is giving the uh, instability history since long and frequent fall can uh, have a ACL uh, anterior cruciate ligament uh, tear along with meniscus, sir. Okay. Uh, which is the most important structure which help you in uh, climbing up and down the stair? Okay, sir. Uh... So, cruciates. Yeah. Cruciates. Cruciate is one of them, definitely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody else want to all So, sensor mechanism, sir. Yes. Who is that? Ankit, sir. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Okay. Very good. So, uh, it is the extensor mechanism. So, what do you think? I have shown you the clinical picture. Some, and uh, uh, so probably patellofemoral uh, instability. Patellofemoral instability. So, what do you... What are the types of patellar femoral instability? Lateral patellar instability. Okay. Yeah. Or simply you can say it's a mm -hmm. patella dislocation of the patella. Mm -hmm. Or when you have but, different, you know, he is giving history of falls. Do you get falls in an ACL tear, you know, in the chronic ACL insufficiency, frequent falls during no. running and dancing? No. Mm -hmm. no correct. No. And uh, do you, what is the basic problem of ACL tear uh, when you, is, is it uh, more problematic when you are going up or down the stairs? Down the stairs. Down the stairs. Down the stairs. Down stairs. Down stairs. Down stairs. Here, when there is a patellar problem, when your knee is not stable, you'll have problem both. It's, uh, both in going up and down the stairs. Right. 
So this patient he gives history of frequent fall. She is a female, and she gives history of few years of uh, problem. So what else you want to know in the history other than this? You want to know something else? So any dislocations of the patella? Yeah, that's what we are we are saying. Definitely in the history they will say that I had a. They some people will say I had dislocation. She will come. She gives history of frequent falls while running and dancing. Somebody falls uh, means that the patella got dislocated. That time only she will fall. Otherwise she will not fall. Right. Anything else? Sir, uh, history of apprehension, sir. How do you take the history of apprehension? Sir, is uh, is she able to relocate it on her own? No. What is what do you mean by apprehension? Apprehension, you can see it in the knee joint. You can see in the shoulder joint. You can see what is apprehension? Apprehension test. All it's these apprehension tests. What are you trying to do? Hmm. Uh, sir, uh, uh, the feeling of a knee giving way. Whatever knee or shoulder, whatever it is, it is the feeling that somebody is trying to. You are trying to provocate a dislocation, and they will try to resist it. Right. So the apprehension is coming because they feel that their joint is going to dislocate, so they will hold it. That's apprehension of dislocation. Right. So how can you uh, take a history of apprehension? I don't. That's what I just wanted to know. Can you take so a history is, of apprehension? That is completely clinical examination. Yeah, based. it is. Yeah. It, it is. You it is a clinical provocative test. You cannot take a history of apprehension. Otherwise, you you do it something. Uh, you know, provocative thing. You have to ask something like. Uh, You can like a shoulder. You might have be able to ask, like whether you have a problem in, you know, like um, throwing onto a mango tree to the top. Like you are going for a deep external rotation, so you have a some kind of you are not able to do or not. That may be some kind of an apprehension, but I don't know knee whether you can ask that. So past history, she gives history of multiple episodes of patellar dislocation in the past. And the last episode was three months back while climbing steps. First episode. Usually, what is the age group of this uh, recurrent dislocation of uh, patellar uh, patients? Usually, age group. Uh, Second yeah. decade, mostly. Yeah, mostly is in the middle part of the second decade. So mm-hmm. same thing, fourteen, thirteen to seventeen type, and mostly all of them will have what ligament laxity. MPL. Yes, they, most of them will have ligamentous laxity, and mostly they get reduced by the patient herself. Mm. And it, usually it is the she, not the he. Most of them are the she's. she doesn't give history of any other joint dislocation so uh, what are we have to look in the history the frequency of dislocation how many times it has dislocated uh, what is the you know clinical relevance of asking the frequency of dislocation raj i don't know who's raj i am just seeing the first person after balu is raj here so raj can you tell me what are the clinical you know whenever you are asking because as a post graduate if you ask a question that should be clinically relevant so why do you want to know the frequency of dislocation raj raj is can you unmute raj yeah yes yeah yeah can i see you also answer the video so maybe more sort of bony uh, pathology will be have more uh, incidents rather than pardon the associated associated uh, bony pathology will have uh, more incidents of recurrent dislocation so more the uh, number of dislocation means it is a bony pathology not a soft tissue pathology 
that's what you mean to say okay anybody else agustin george so so since uh, uh, the cardiac history is very very you know common here in this patient so we should know the lax about the laxity of other joints yeah like shoulder what, elbow etc that we have already we have told no there is no from the history you cannot ask somebody the laxity of the, we have told there is no uh, uh lax no history of any other joint dislocation so frequency of i am asking why, why we should ask for the frequency of dislocation if you have more the frequency of dislocation the chance of vascularity chance of Vas having vascular compromise not vascular mm. cartilage defect cartilage yeah you can have cartilage defect both at the patella and at the trochlea and you should have uh, you should see think about something like uh, you know very common causes uh, not uh, you know multiple history coming in means either she had a very violent injury initially or she has a patella alta or something you know uh, you know which is an inherent problem is there or a trochlear dysplasia that kind of a thing you should think if the frequency of dislocation is uh, rapid and it is you know uh, more so you have to how will you, what is an acute uh, when will you say that it's a recurrent dislocation of patella agustin if there is more than 3 episodes 3 or more so if it is if you are having 3 means what it's a recurrent dislocation 3 or more so this is a recurrent dislocation so i will ask nishan what is habitual dislocation nishan nishan the marchandini yeah is nishan the not sharavana kumar what is habitual dislocation of patella okay. so a dislocation happens when the each time patient's knee is flexed in a flex position yeah it's a habitual dislocation so you so what do you see usually which is a more prominent thing when you what happens when you extend that knee you are flexing it will be dislocated what happens which is more evident during flexion sir no during flexion it get dislocated right so that is actually when you look at the patient if you have have you seen any patient with habitual dislocation of patella no sir no so any, anybody here who has seen patient with habitual dislocation of patella I ask uh, who is there? John is there. There is a John. Hi, John. John. John has disappeared. Anybody? Vivek Joy. Vivek. can I you have have you, have you seen habitual dislocation of patella uh, no sir like no, no. Sir. okay anybody has seen habitual dislocation of patella anybody from lourdes is there yes sir yeah. who is that uh, sir akil akil tell me uh, uh, habitual dislocation whenever the knee is flexed uh, uh, the patella will get dislocated and when we extend uh, it will get uh, relocated Okay. yeah so when you extend it it gets reloc relocated that is actually very evident when you are flexing it gets it's not very dramatic but when you are extending the knee it dramatically comes back from you know when you have extend from around 20 to 0 degree so that time it relocates that is very dramatic so actually the relocation is more dramatic in habitual dislocation so what is permanent dislocation I'll ask somebody else about that. Bhagiraj yeah. um, Subramani. What is permanent dislocation? Uh, uh, it is irreducible dislocation. There. That is an acute, acute dislocation which is not reducible. 
And what do you mean by permanent dislocation? I don't know, sir. Nirav? Dis Nirav? Uh, yeah, Nirav. Dislocation which is combined with some secondary changes, sir. No. It's a good guess, actually. Yeah. Rasim? It's in something the similar to the guess of uh, uh, our Subramanian. Uh, can you, what else can you, you know, imagine? What is a permanent dislocation? <laughs> Rasim, Razim, Elayadat. Razim is there or not there? Sherry? Sherry, can you guess? Sakriya. So we'll go back. Uh, Andrew Juice. Can you guess? Everybody has disappeared. Ankit. It's a congenital dislocation. The patella have never been in the uh, trochlea. Yeah. So uh, can you repeat again? Ankit, I didn't get it. Uh, sir, I think it's the congenital dislocation. And the yeah, congenital have... dislocation is a type of uh, permanent yeah. dislocation where it remains patella. dislocated. Yeah. So, How permanent no, dislocation no, no, no. is, it, it, it remains dislocated, it never comes back. In a habitual in dislocation, extension. when you extend, it comes back, right? But in a permanent dislocation, even in extension, it gets dislocated. I mean, it remains dislocated. It's not, you cannot say it like irreducible, it's a irreducible kind of a dislocation, but you say irreducible dislocation in case of an oh. acute dislocation. Not in a permanent dislocation. Permanent dislocation is a chronic kind of a thing where it remains dislocated forever. It will never come back. That's a permanent dislocation. So, very, you know, you can have in you know, a history of associated trauma along with that. So, uh, in the history taking, you should ask what is the, was there any trauma? Was it a significant trauma for the first episode? <laughs> So, what does it uh, signify? Mahesh, I can see you. I'll ask you. I've never asked you. Okay. He joined us only in one week. Thank you. I never asked you a question. So I'll ask you the first question. Let me see. What is the sig significance of the first episode of trauma? In any dislocation, whether it is a shoulder dislocation or it's a patellar dislocation. You always yeah. ask about the first dislocation. You don't ask about the third and the fourth dis dislocations. You is always ask for the history of how it has happened. Why? Uh, the velocity of trauma. Yeah, if it is a high energy trauma, I mean, whatever it is, a, something, you know, it's a, more dramatically it has happened, then it is not a, you are not able to reduce it. That means there is significant uh, uh, injury to the soft tissue has occurred there, right? If it is an easily reducible, so if it is due to a trivial trauma and it is reduced it uh, very easily, that means that will go easily also. And it is a something, some other collagen problem or a hyperlaxity problem, all those stuff. But it is the other way. It is a there is definitely a uh, injury to the ligament is there. So first trauma is always significant. Others is not that significant. So history of history of other uh, joint dislocations uh, to know any hyperlaxity. Then similar family history, definitely, uh, the, especially it runs in the family for hyperlaxity, especially the mothers. Prematurity is a cause. So if you somebody asks you in the history what antenatal uh, history you ask, you ask for prematurity. Premature uh, babies are more prone to have uh, hyperlaxity and joint dislocations. So general, uh, these all things you look at. Okay. Mm. 
we'll go uh, so local when you uh, somebody wants to take all those stuff you have to look like any other uh, thing any other uh, case presentation you have to look for the gait of the patient first attitude and deformity so which are the deformities which usually cause uh, recurrent dislocation of the patella somebody wants to have a take valgus deformity yeah that's already Is given angle is high knock knees okay perfect what's the second thing pardon i didn't get it first thing is given genu valgus yeah yeah due to that q angle is you know greater what? high q angle q angle q angle I am about the deformities q angle okay. is not a deformity right increased to tibial torsion external torsion yeah yes then Fem- increased, increased to fem- uh, femoral antiversion also increased femoral antiversion correspondingly Anti- increased Ingr- tibial ex- ex- extension torsion. and what happens to the foot uh it will increase the uh, q angle no on the foot what is the corresponding uh, foot in doing of gait there will be pronation of the foot so that will be seen. then whether there is any swelling of the knee you have to look at the position of the patella right how will you look at the position of the patella mm-hmm. it's uh, patella height can be compared with other side yeah any any squinting of patella usually all this patella alta and all those stuff are seen bilaterally right? so you have cannot compare but you have to have a normally you have to see and can you tell me the normal progression of the patella in uh, on flexion how does it goes on no um, when you flex the knee how normally the patella moves it's uh, moves more up, uh, upwards than laterally and you know, in uh, whenever there is lateral instability patella moves more laterally than upwards i am asking for a normal patient somebody can work. in 15 to 20 degree of knee flexion patella is uh, uh, fully in trochlea in 15 to 20 degree of flexion of the knee yeah it's actually it's 0 to 20 after 0 to 20 from 20 onwards the inferior pole of the patella will come on to the trochlea right so mm-hmm. 20 to 60 degrees it will be the middle part and by 90 to 120 you will have the superior part and after that it will be the quadriceps tendon mm-hmm. so that is how the patella uh, moves on so when you look at the uh, patella as such usually we look at the knee at 20 to 30 degrees of flexion that you keep your knee on the you sit there on the couch and keep the knee on the on your thighs and see how is that or you just sit on the side and put your thigh on to the examination table and keep the patient's knee over your your thigh region so you keep it around 20 to 30 degree so that time you look at the position of the patella whether the it is coming into the trochlea region or whether it is at a higher level that's the easiest way in the inspection then you look at the size and shape and also look for the quadriceps wasting palpation all this stuff uh, we will look mm. can anybody tell me the test to look for synovial hypertrophy How will you look for a sign of a hypertrophy on palpation? Sir, we feel a cord-like uh, uh, feeling on the medial aspect of the knee. No, I am just asking about sign of a hy- hypertrophy, not about patella dislocation as such. Sign of a hypertrophy is more commonly seen in very uh, rarely seen in uh, in uh, patella dislocation. I have never seen it. So patella dislocation. Just asking about how do you look for sign of a hypertrophy? In uh, one is inspection, you get you feel there is some kind of a swelling. Second thing, on palpation. Sanjeev, Sanjeev Pranav. How will you? Feel, you know, palpate for a synovial hypertrophy. 
In which all cases do you get synovial hypertrophy? So you think about now, everybody goes from diagnosis to back. You know, usually it should be the opposite. You go from the history, from the examination, then you should have your diagnosis. You think about a patient with rheumatoid arthritis or a synovial chondromatosis or a pigmented villanodular synovitis or uh, rheumatoid arthritis yes, um, or a gout patient. Um. Will palpate kind of hypertrophy? How will you look? Sir, at this? Will palpate usually by rolling the structures between the fingertip and the underlying bone? Any hard? Yeah. Feeling right. of palpate. So, so, what is that test known as? Uh, sweep test. It's known as Solomon's test. Yes, sir. This is the. Uh, imagine this is the patella. I I don't know whether I cannot see myself. Okay, this is the patella. So this is the patella. You hold the patella and roll it like this. Okay. Yes. So you feel a bogginess. You have a bogginess because of the swelling. So this is known as a Solomon stress. Uh -huh. Then I think all of you know how to look for lateral tilt of the patella. You have to try to tilt the patella. Then lateral retinacular tightness. How will you look for la lateral retinacular tightness? And it's very common for you. Sir, sir. Uh, by uh, uh, patellar tilt and patellar glide. Yeah, towards the medial side. Yeah. You try to move it medial, it will not move. Medial, uh, there will be less gliding towards the yeah, medial side. Less gliding towards. So you look for uh, flexion extension, hyperextension, patellar tracking, active and dynamic. What is J sign? On extension, any extension, and the patella will move uh, more laterally compared to the up, up towards the movement. Yeah. So now, now the patella will move from uh, medial normally, side to laterally. So it will take a J uh, curve. So that is a J sign. Chairman, what what is Q angle? What is Q, Rahul? Rahul, because Rahul is coming first, I think, yeah, after Ankit. Rahul, what is Q of Q angle? What is Q of Q angle? Quadriceps angle, that is. Uh, what is that? So it's an uh, angle between the. Uh, How will you measure it? Yes, sir. Uh, so I'm not able to recall it. At okay. It's last, from uh, ASIS, ASIS to the to the center of the patella. Uh, that's yeah. the axis, one axis. And we will extrapolate this one. And the second axis is from patella to downwards to the second uh, that meta tarsus. Who is that? I cannot see you. Yeah. Who is speaking? Uh, so this is Dr. Nasir. I'm Nasir from Delhi. Okay, 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 okay. Let me put on speaker uh, this one, then I can see. So, from ASI to where will you mark? To tip of pat, I mean, center of patella. Yeah, so then from center of patella to where? Uh, to the tibial to platform, I mean. You have to, to have two lines, right? One is from ASI to center of the patella, correct? Yes, so. Mm -hmm. Then you should have another line. Then only you can mm -hmm. have the angle, right? So, mm -hmm. one is the center of the patella. So, one line is over, which is the other. The second line is from patella to the second metatarsal. Patella, patella to the tibial tubercles. Tibial tubercles. Yeah, tibial Probably. tuberosity. Yeah. Okay. Center of the patella to the okay, center tibial of tuberosity, the tibial sorry. tuberosity. Yes. So, mm -hmm. you extrapolate that line. So, what is the normal value? Now I cannot see. Uh, okay. What is the normal value, guys? Bivin Lal. Bivin Lal. 
normally it is eight to fifteen three. For who? For you or your counterpart? Uh, for males, eight to twelve degree. For females, twelve to fifteen degree. Yeah, why females more? What up, fellas? Okay, good. So something more than twenty is taken as abnormal. So, so basically, you know, like once you come to the treatment part, you are. treatment nowadays depend everything on q angle whether you have a higher q angle mean more than 20 q angle or less than 20 q angle or whether you have a trochlear dysplasia or a patellar alter these are the three things you look when you are uh, you know going for the treatment part but otherwise the rest of the things are the same so intermalleolar distance basically in valgus need to be more intercondylar distance also will be low How will uh, the thigh foot angle for measuring the tibial torsion? What is Craig test? So you can see, I think, where I can. So this is the you look for the thigh foot angle. You flex it, then you. Look for the angle. What is Craig test? Somebody or for the take. So Craig test is looking for the femoral antiversion. The patient is in the prone position, and you rotate the uh, your leg so that the the GT becomes most prominent by feeling it. So that angle from the midline is taken. So. Eight to fifteen is the normal femoral angle, you know. And here, uh, patellar dislocation patients, you can have higher and diversion. And correspondingly, you can have ex more external tibial torsion and uh, corresponding uh, foot uh, pronation deform. So, special test. How will you do apprehension test? Nira, Nira is um, smiling nicely in the photo. No, Nira, it's not Nira. Huh? Somebody else. We have one uh, doctor Abiru from Mumbai. What is? How will you do apprehension? Abiru, yeah. Uh, sir, uh, we try to push the patella towards the lateral side, and we see the expression of the patient whether uh, he is having uh, apprehension of the patella getting dislocated. So you get a patient. You just ask how will you do a apprehension test? So how will you explain that? You do it in standing position, sitting position, lying down position. Sir, in lying down position, I feel. Yeah. So what will be the position of the knee in extension uh, flexion? The knee should be in extension in lying down position, and we try to push the patella from the medial to the lateral side. And uh, in case of patient developing any apprehension that the knee will be dislocated, uh, he will have change of expression. So, what so is the... a patellar dislocation? Basically, means um, what is a which is a patellar dislocation means di dislocation of the patella from the trochlea, right? Sure. So, at what degree of flexion is the patella inside the Trochlear to say that it is dislocated. Right, you have to be like a shoulder joint. It has to be with the the glenoid should articulate with the humeral head humeral to head. say that it's inside. It's a shoulder is not dislocated. Right. So for a patella of humeral joint, at what degree of flexion you have the trochlear getting? You know, uh, is uh, you know getting articulated with the patella, where you can say that it is not there to say it is dislocated. Uh, so in twenty to sixty degree. If... Yeah. So you keep it around twenty to thirty degrees of flexion. Okay, sir. Then you try to dislocate. Dislocate. So okay. what happens? 
so the patient will develop uh, uh, like a feeling of the knee getting dislocated or uh, patella getting dislocated so he will have change of expression and we have to yeah. see usually what happens you look for the change in expression to see or what what will they do mm-hmm. they will lie down because like yeah. uh, they will lie down there and they will start crying you dislocate the shoulder uh, the patella they allow you to dislocate the patella kila they will cry they will lie down and cry uh, doctor uh, i will try just so they will resist yeah they will resist they will take the other hand and hold hold yeah so they will resist your maneuver right so that is what happens so apprehension test is you keep the usually you do by keeping you know when the patient is lying down you put your you bend your you bend your knee and put your you know uh, your thigh underneath the patient's thigh like you are standing you no know? patient is lying down you put your knee underneath keep it at 20 to 30 degrees of flexion and you try to dislocate the patient will resist you so that is apprehension test right so patellar tip tilt and all you do it in extension not in flexion so apprehension test is that's because you are trying to dislocate so dislocation to occur you have to articulate first so you are trying to articulate by flexing the in patellar tilt and patellar glide somebody somebody volunteer to say what is patellar glide test and patellar tilt test agastin uh, hi agastin can you tell what is patellar tilt and what is patellar glide we uh, don't go um we hold the inside uh, medial aspect of patella and, t- and try to tilt it out uh, not very sure ankit sir uh, patient is in open position and knee in ex- knee extension uh, first uh, hold the patella and uh, try to elevate the medial facet yeah. and uh, usually we can elevate med- medial face it up to the horizontal level then uh, do the corresponding on the lateral side and uh, if there is patellar tightness uh, we cannot do the lateral tilt of patella and um, in patella what glide, is the difference between the tilt and the glide in patella glide uh, we move the patella horizontally yeah. uh, so uh, to measure me- measure it to measure the degree of of glide we divide the patella into four quadrants okay. and measure how much quadrant it moves usually up to two quadrant it will move medially and laterally and if it, if it is there if it, there is any tightness on the lateral aspect uh, patella won't move, uh, move uh, glide medially there will be tightness okay good good that's it so what is patella grind test uh, we yeah. uh, push the pat- patella against the uh, trochlea and if it, if there is a patella femoral arthritis patient will experience pain yes so what is elis test elis test is for what so you have to understand all these things so you have a, we are looking why you want to do all these things because you have to have a, uh, when you come to the patella dislocation as such you have the soft tissue component for that and the bony component for that so we are looking for the uh, soft tissue component by doing all this test right apprehension test you are trying to check whether there is a mpfl whether it is torn patellar tilt glide you are checking whether there is a lateral retinacular or medial retinacular tightness or whether is a tight iliotibial band so patellar grind test to see that whether the cartilage underneath the patella is gone or not so all this has got a clinical significance and a bearing on your treatment so another uh, soft tissue cause for um, patellar dislocation is tested by elis test what is elis test So Elie's test is to look for the quadriceps tightness. So you make the patient lie down and prone and try to flex the knee. So that time the affected hip goes up. So that shows the quadriceps tightness. 
So that is another cause of tissue, cause for uh, patellar dislocation. So that is how you look. These are the uh, pictures for your uh, what uh, Ankit has been telling the for the patellar glide, the quadrant. So this is looking for the uh, shift your pain. So look for distal neuro def deficit, muscle power, RIM of the opposite knee, etc. Et so what are the investigations you do? You get a patient with patellar dislocation, the current dislocation of patella in your clinic. What will you do? What will test you? Do? X-ray of knee in AP and lateral and skyline views. Yeah. Any other special view you want to? What What is the purpose of taking AP and lateral view? Uh, in a, AP, yeah, we can see any uh, postochondral uh, fractures, uh, whether it is present or not. Then... Uh, we can see the status of the joint, uh, patellofemoral joint, any uh, arthritic changes or there. Then uh, we can. Uh, yeah, anyway. You cannot see for look for the arthritis right from the AP. You can look for any fragmentation or there is a, uh, you know, you can get osteochondral fracture that can be seen. You can get you know biparatite patella and all that's looked and in the AP view. So in the lateral view, you look for you can patella, what are alta, things you look height. So patella alta, patella alta. height. Yeah, a lot of things are look from the lateral view, right? Lot we will come to that. What is one is AP view, lateral view, then skyline view, and the special view is infra patella view, axial view. So this is the uh, this is the Marchin view. Okay. These are the different views how you take. Uh, the B, the B is the axial. So in the, basically you look for the skyline view and the lateral view to see for the position of the patella. I think they have. So these are few signs which are seen in the, uh, uh, you should know, I think. Uh, one is the, uh, uh, one is the double condor sign. One is the, uh, uh, crossing sign that is uh, uh, for the lateral semicondyl hypoplasia. Then you look for fracture of the face head. Then, so so can you explain a bit about the uh, three special views like merchant views? The significance of these merchant, Lorraine, and uh, Houston. What's the significance of these uh, angles? These yeah, views. I'm coming to that. I don't know what happened. May. Uh, okay, let me. See. So uh, basically, you are you are looking for the lateral. Uh, we'll come to each one of them. I think it is coming. We'll discuss. Mm -hmm. So what okay. is this? So, uh, this is these are the three things you should see. One is the uh, supratrochlear spur that is usually seen because of the arthritis developing on the uh, patella. So you can see this in the lateral view. That's a Spur sign. There is called is a per spur sign. Then there is a crossing sign that is seen on the true lateral film of the radio and the knee. When the line of the trochlear groove crosses the anterior border of one of the condylar fossa, so that is the you line of the trochlear crosses one of the uh, uh, line of the trochlear fossa. This is a double contour sign. You can see the uh, two lines of the condyles can be seen from the. Uh, side with that shows there is a hypoplasia of the uh, lateral femoral condyle. I think why is it not okay? Trochlear uh, dysplasia. So uh, the in the uh, lateral view, the one of the most important thing it is we have taken at the thirty degree uh, flexion view. You look for the uh, uh, the Blumensat line. That is important to check whether there is any um, uh, patella alta or not. 
that is also very important i told you when you are looking clinically for the uh, treatment point of view you look for the q angle you look for the patella alta and you look for proclear dysplasia these three things will determine the your uh, what type of surgery you are going to do on this patient so blumens at line you i is taken at lateral view of the knee at 30 degree flexion the line extend in the inferior pole of the patella at the 30 degrees of flexion so it will be just touching the inferior pole so it, if it is going up then it is a patella alta Yeah, this is not moving yet. Then I think you all know about all this incel salivity ratio, length of the patella tendon versus again these are uh, you should know normally is one that the patella tendon to patella uh, uh, height that ratio that again gives you the patella alta uh, modified incel. These are all asked in the question. Um, then another is the. Uh, the black burn peel ratio these are all you, these are all asked in your exams for your uh, or maybe for your viva and for your uh, for your uh, 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 your uh, short questions so what we basically look for uh, one important thing what you look at uh, is the uh, is a sulcus angle that is very important so you nowadays we we'll send the patient for ct and look for tttg ratio to uh, uh, rather than all these things but practically for it is easiest is to look is a sulcus angle so normally uh, the range is considered as around 140 degree so normally 125 to 150 so it was something more than uh, 150 indicates there is a um, uh, there is a trochlear dysplasia sulcus angle you draw uh, Uh, this particular angle you can see the you mark both the points the m and the l that is the medial highest point in the medial epicondyle and highest point in the lateral epicondyle center you uh, mark the point and from the uh, center so this angle is <coughs> angle this is the sulcus angle so that you have to uh, know these are some other angles which is uh, measured so mri you look for any loose bodies and a tear of the uh, mpfl <coughs> so one, one thing you have to look you have an acute dislocation of the patella right the patient has come with the first dislocation um, first dislocation what all things will you look will you send the patient uh, one is you take an x ray second thing you look for a mri so uh, if you uh, will you operate on the first dislocation of a patella dislocation no now we need a patient has come with the first dislocation will you operate or what are the I mean he can operate um, what are the indications for that there is any osteochondral fragment Between the patellar femoral joint, we can suggest arthroscopic removal of the fragment. What else will you do? In the first case, now it is shown that you can go for an acute repair of your MPFL and your tone uh, um, uh, retinaculum, you know, the medial retinaculum, in the first episode, rather than going for the if you have a you know like a young girl 13 year old coming or a 14 year old coming with a first episode of dislocation you have a osteochondral fragment then you do an arthroscopic removal and you repair acute repair of the mbfl uh, rather than going for a reconstruction you can go for a repair uh, with uh, you know uh, medial uh, retinacular uh, tear uh, imbrication so that can be done but uh, always explain there is a chance of a re uh, dislocation but usually you don't go for a M- straight away mpfl so you go for a acute mpfl repair in the uh, in a skeletally immature uh, patient for the first dislocation so you look for the tttg ratio which is uh, 
more clinically significant than the sulcus angle like we say then um, because for like for a cardiologist now uh, echo is more important than you know uh, you do an echocardiogram to look for your uh, your uh, valve issues rather than hearing with the stethoscope so x rays are now become like a stethoscope for us right when you come to the cold orthopedic so in key you look for rather than see, uh, sulcus angle you look for the tttg ratio that is tibial to gruppal tibial to velocity ratio the distance here if it is uh, more than 20 is abnormal so this tttg ratio and q angle determines when the patella whether you have a patella alta or not determines your treatment so these are the ways of looking at so what are the non surgical method you have uh, first dislocation now loose body nothing at a 14 year old girl you don't go and operate her right so what are the what all uh, things will you do a patient coming with first dislocation patient coming with first dislocation what all things uh, will you do somebody agustin uh, will give analgesics a knee immobilizer to keep the knee in extension and then hmm give the time for mpfl to uh, heal hmm by keeping it in extension hmm for 2 uh, to 3 weeks wait 2 to 3 weeks you tell the patient at 2 2 to 3 weeks you keep you have a patient because most of you take duties right uh, so you will be seeing in the casualty and you give a knee immobilizer in extension until you keep it for 2 to 3 weeks you have to say no you keep it for 3 weeks right ah uh, for your knee to pain to subside will you do an mri scan uh not in the first episode so how will you know there is a chondral fracture so if the patient is there it is always better nowadays to do an mri also to look for any chondral fragment is there if the chondral fragment you can have uh, x rays is uh, always not uh, you know you may not see in the x rays uh, because there will be a chondral fragment may not be seen if there is an osteochondral fragment then only you will uh, you will be able to uh, see that so uh, it's better to take an mri scan to rule out any uh, chondral injury is there contrary you go in and do an acute repair with arthroscopic removal or if it is attached with the mpfl sometimes you have an mpfl attached with you put an anchor and repair it also then what will you do after 3 weeks so sir so, so, like i am not able to get you somebody was talking here yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. ki, yeah, no, sir, yes, sir. Sir, I'm saying saying yeah, yeah. asking can we ask the patient to go for MRI in acute knee injury? Yeah. Because yeah. that can give a lot of artifacts in MRI due to inflammations and you know that uh, fluid accumulation. So when will you do an? Uh, you mean for an acute knee, maybe a knee dislocation with uh, mm -hmm. ACL, PCL, MCL all gone. So you mean you wait for that patient? you have a knee dislocation automatically reduced coming into mm -hmm. the into the uh, or uh, your er man uh, when will you go in sir after a week when uh, the swelling subsides then in that condition it will give a better idea with the mri will be do you think uh, a patient with acl pcl mcl injury that's the most common mm -hmm. injury you get uh, will have a swelling will subside in Seven days. So whatever days it subsides, can we wait for that? Mm. Yeah. Or you have to go in early. So okay. uh, so it's not you. You have a good radiologist. Like we all think we are good orthopedic surgeons. So they, we have good radiologists and good uh, 
hire tesla machines to come out with your tire because you have okay. you have to have a, this i told you, you know you have you you are missing the boat here if you have got a skeletally immature girl coming with mm-hmm. them with a patellar dislocation first time mm-hmm. now the recommended thing is that you repair the mpfl if there is an osteochondral fracture because you have mm-hmm. to go for a bony healing there mm-hmm. you'll be missing it right Mm-hmm. but you have to explain there is a chance of re-dislocation okay. so things are changing like you have a shoulder dislocation first time dislocator less than 20 years mm-hmm. what will you do you have a patient an 18 year old or a 19 year old coming with a shoulder dislocation first time mm-hmm. dislocator what will you do Sir, after reduction, I'll immobilize first. Yeah. Uh, yeah, then, uh, yeah. Then we'll get a CT scan done to see, you know, the bony uh, injury might be in glenoid or uh, that part of uh, proximal so limbus. First time mm-hmm. dislocators usually will have a pure Bungart lesion, right? So you have to do an MR. Mm-hmm. So an MRI. Okay. Right? And if you think that that first dislocation, there is a Bungart tear. Mm-hmm. Is there in the MRI? It is best to go on the first time. If you don't mm-hmm. have a Bangart lesion, there is no point. He is a MDI kind of a patient, multidirectional okay. instability patient. You don't have to go in. But a mm-hmm. patient at the age less than 20 years coming with the first time dislocation of the shoulder joint it is always better to uh, operate him on the first time. First time okay. dislocator. Because they are 100% they will go for a Dislocation. dislocation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so that's the same. Patella dislocation. Now the things have changed. Patella dislocation may be the one uh, thing, uh, one problem where there are thousand, more than thousand surgeries described for it. So till now the solution mm-hmm. has not come. So uh, things are changing for patella dislocation a lot. Now what is recommended is for a skeletally immature patient, you do an MR. Immediately, I mean, definitely you do uh, X ray very well, then you do an MRI scan. And if there is a uh, osteochondral fracture, you have to go in there, then you have to go in and repair it also. Then, what other thing after three weeks, what will you do? And you are not going, it doesn't have a uh, osteochondral fracture or anything. This uh, patella dislocation with the uh, Medial retinacular tear, you immobilize the patient for three weeks, you ask them to come back again. You will go in for a physiotherapy, you will go for a um, uh, VMO strengthening exercises. <clears throat> VMO strengthening exercises will start. And you can give some kind of now different kind of, uh, you know, uh, knee uh, arthrosis and braces are up where you can use that for when they are, when they are going for a active sports. So surgical management basically depends on whether the there are, as I have told you, nowadays um, yeah, we take it as uh, less than, uh, one is an acute, I have already, uh, already uh, uh, you know, elaborated on that. So you on a skeletally immature patient. In a skeletally mature patient, uh, again, if you have a um, osteochondral fracture, you go in and do a repair initially. Otherwise, you just leave him immobilized. Wait for a, a, if it is dislocating again, you have to go in. So you have to, first thing you clinically uh, clinically look at is making, uh, you are measuring the Q angle. Right. You, if the Q angle is less than 20 degrees, you basically do is a MPFL repair only. There is no other things like other soft tissue component like there is no lateral uh, tightness or there is a, a iliotibial band tightness or a cordyceps tightness or any other issues. Usually you don't get all those stuff. So less than 20 years you go for an isolated MPFL repair. More than 20 degree what will you do? Mahi, uh, okay, Mahi, she's on my issue. 
ವರ್ಷ ವರ್ಷ ಇಸ್ ವರ್ಷ ಇಫ್ ದ ಕ್ಯೂ ಆಂಗಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ದೆನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಪೇಶಂಟ್ ವಿತ್ ರಿಕರೆಂಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಲೊಕೇಶನ್ ಪ್ಯಾಟರ್ನ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಯು will medialize the tibial tubercle sir yeah so you go for a distal realignment procedure right <coughs> so you basically divided in the proximal realignment procedure and a distal realignment procedure so when you have more than q angle is more than 20 degree you go for a distal realignment procedure so you go for a usually they the q angle is more than 20 means usually they will have a lateralized tibial tuberosity so you will try to do an osteotomy of the tibia and lateralize it so some patients you can have a patella alta also associated, associated with that so what will you do john c no john c told you have a patella alta what will you do john c yes sir uh... so uh, again uh, we can uh, uh, distally we can insert the uh, tibial tuberosity sir yeah so you do distal and medialization medialization and distalization of the yeah. tibial tuberosity yes. right. so if you have so you have you got the q angle you got the patella alta you got the uh, the uh, you now you are going into the um trochlear dysplasia by right? you look at uh, the patient you have a tttg ratio um, more than 20 or you have a sulcus angle more than 140 then you have to think about trochlear deepening procedures right so these are basically nowadays these are, these are the three the surgeries associated so whenever you are going for a distal realignment procedures when the q angle is more than 20 degree you reconstruct the mpfl also along with that you do your distalization and medialization of the tibial tuberosity plus mpfl repair or you have got a trochlear dysplasia again you do a trochlear deepening osteotomies and then you go in for a um go for your mpfl repair so hardly trochlear osteotomy and trochleoplasty is it same sir it's the same so usually your trochleoplasty you are doing it doing it by drilling it's usually in the skeletally immature patients you can do you drill it and make a drill and take a sleeve of cartilage and take it out and then you deepen it by De- deepen it uh, uh, by using a burr or something you make a groove there and then you reattach that or put it back so that is what is known as a trochlear deepening all these trochlear plasty all the trochlear deepening procedures so usually these are done in the younger patients right not in uh, older patients by the time they passes the age of 30 years most of them with the trochlear dysplasia will have a patellar problem also so most of them doesn't work so you have to in those cases you are going what your trochlear plasty will be converted into trochlear osteotomy where you have to cut the bone take it out then deep and put it back then you have to do so both are ex- essentially one you say more, more in an younger individual and one in an elderly individual so anything more Ma- merchant view we have already spoken of few got it uh, it's a skyline view when you are taking it. You, you keep it in 30 degree flexion and take the axle so we can go to uh, what is this okay okay so we'll have um, one more case i think uh, or we will stop balu balu ah yes sir yes sir we can we'll have one more or we'll stop y- yes sir i think it's a quick cost case no sir yeah quick one yes sir yes sir we, we can have a rapid fire okay
Yes, sir. So this is a 28-year-old male presented with history of injury to right knee sustained while playing football two months back. Uh, complaints of recurrent pain, instability, and occasional lopping of the knee. This is an MRI. Anybody? It's a classical sign. Anybody yeah, want? That is sagging, uh, sagging PCL. So what this is, is it? G, G, and G, what is it? Double PCL. Yeah, it's double PCL sign. What does it? What does it mean? Bakadan retire of uh, meniscus. Yeah. Okay. Very good. What is unhappy triad of Fermo? Anybody volunteer? ACL, Okay, so you have got MCL, ACL, and the medial meniscus. So, uh, which meniscus is more commonly injured, whether it is a medial meniscus or the latter? In acute injuries, it's lateral meniscus. Yeah. And in chronic injuries, medial meniscus. So, medial meniscus. So, what is the most sensitive test for ACL and what is the most specific test for ACL? Most sensitive is lateral, sir. Most specific is P, uh, pivot shift. Okay. What are the prerequisites for doing a pivot shift test? You need an intact M MCL. Anything else? Uh, and ITB also. You should have an index, yeah, an index tibial complex, a eh? non functioning ACL should be there, and the index medial complex should be there. What is reverse forward shift? It's for uh, post or lateral cord injuries. Yeah, for PCL and uh, PCL and basically for PCLs. Why? Uh, which meniscus is commonly injured? That already I think somebody has said why. In acute and chronic way. So is the, is less mobile. Uh, medial is more mobile. Lateral yeah. injured. So, medial meniscus, assertion of medial meniscus is less than lateral meniscus. So, that's why it's more injured. Lateral meniscus is, at, is attached to popliteus muscle. Acute ACL, lateral meniscus is more common. In chronic ACL, medial meniscus is uh, more commonly done. So, these are some of the questions which were asked earlier. So, we have just put it. So, this is uh, uh, this another. Uh, it's an 18 year old uh, basketball player. So just I wanted to, somebody had a question. Uh, I think Nasser, no? Nasser, yes, yes, you sir. had a uh, patient coming with, um, you had a similar patient, 18 year old basketball player. He had a four leave look, and you find there is a um, um, this patient on an MRI. I mean, supposed to have found an ACL with an MCL. When will you go? I couldn't understand, sir. Could you please repeat the question? Uh. You have an 18 year old basketball player who comes mm -hmm. with, he's a national level player or a state level player coming to you mm -hmm. with an injury to the knee. Mm -hmm. so you do an, do an MRI, mm -hmm. right? He came with an injury on the same day. Uh, you find out because he's a player, now he's very apprehensive. You do MRI. And you find out the patient has got a ACL and an MCL injury. How will you go about it? So, as you said, see, uh, there are yeah. different school of thoughts actually. If we find a good radiologist and he can, you know, uh, do the MRI and uh, give me the result properly, then we can uh, do it uh, in acute condition. If not, we'll have to wait uh, for the uh, swelling to subside. Then after that, we'll repair the ligament. So, in a, you know, I'm just asking MCL, ACL, when will you go in? We got a complete tear of the MCL and complete tear of the ACL. Whether you will go in immediately or you will go in later for an active mm -hmm. sportsman. 
immediately immediately so for immediately you have to do an mri scan to know no so you have to go in for an mcl usually if it is an isolated mcl you don't have to go in for a repair but if it is an acl associated with mcl mm-hmm. you repair the uh, acl arthroscopically then you on table look for your extension and flexion opening and on table you decide mm-hmm. on whether you have to go in for a repair So if okay. you have an opening in after ACL repair, uh, mm-hmm. you find it on table there is an opening both in flexion and extension. You go for an MCL repair immediately. Mm, okay. So, so is it possible? Wait. So so is it possible that ACL MCL both are torn? If I repair the ACL, will the uh, I mean uh, knee be stable MCL if I leave heal. the MCL? That will heal itself. Will okay. Heal, okay. Heal if, if, if both if the superficial and the deep mcl is gone it will not heal properly so if you have uh, that's why i told you you have got in 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 flexion and extension if it is gone that is in extension also if it is opening then you have mm. to go in for the mcl repair okay but if it is not opening in extension you can leave it yes okay. so since somebody uh, uh read this one this embari this also was asked i think for your exam that's why there usually you get in this coronal sessions you can see that you know you have both the triangles so here the meniscus is continuing mm-hmm. so what is that so Here we can see anterior horn of lateral meniscus is gone. It, uh, it's not gone. The, yeah. Oh, it's torn actually. <laughs> the anterior meniscus, anterior horn of lateral meniscus is torn. And, When we uh, say in, it is torn. So is it there is hyperlucency. Mm. There is a signal intensity only. this in mean it is torn. okay 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 that's in only one if mm-hmm. if it is torn it has to it communicate be, that is either mm-hmm. superiorly or inferiorly then only that signal change has to communicate either superiorly or inferiorly if it communicates to only one surface you say it is as a grade 2 tear and if it communicate to both the surface it is not as a grade 3 tear here if you look at it in a coronal session you here there is no triangle you are seeing the meniscus continuing right mm. you don't have it is continuing so what what is the diagnosis discoid meniscus it's a discoid meniscus okay, okay. Mm-hmm. most commonly involved site and symptom lateral site sir yeah and symptom Locking. 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 Really get locking. When it is torn. That sound. Such yeah, sexual. you get sounds. Basically, you get you get sounds coming from the knee. So, when will you intervene for a uh, discoid meniscus? You hear the sound. Will you go in for surgery? No, sir. No. So, if the discoid meniscus is torn, if the discoid meniscus is torn, then only you will go in for a surgery. So that means it is either the knee getting locked, or if the your meconius test is positive, this it is symptomatic. Painful. Just for the sounds, you don't operate them. And mostly they are symptomatic. radiological features in x-ray also they have put in so here they you should learn this because they have passed for your okay widen joint space squaring of lateral condyle and cupping of lateral tibial plate i have just uh, took it since you you are uh, you know half of the question is these kind of a questions which is coming mri here this mri the sign is known as the bow tie sign like the bow Tie. This is how it looks. So the discoid meniscus you can 
कहते हैं बोट आई साइन वो यू गाइस कैन अंडरस्टैंड इट राइट सो दिस वाज आल्सो आस्क्ड शुड बी कॉल इट अ डे और यू शुड बी कंटिन्यू okay last one that treatment which meniscus removal leads to early arthritis the medial one or the lateral one medial lateral meniscus lateral meniscus so lateral meniscus whenever uh, possible you try to repair it so why so but because Of they have written it like uh, it's because of the articulation when you are walking, more pressure will be coming into your lateral compartment because your normally your knee is in valgus right, so the pressure will be more onto the lateral compartment. So if you take it out, the cushion effect will be less and there will be more damage coming in. So lateral But... meniscus, whenever possible, you should repair. Medial <coughs> meniscus, even if you don't repair, also it is fine. so um even if you leave a medial meniscus that's what so you have a acl with the medial meniscus like an acute one in the peripheral tear if you just leave it uh, sometimes the medial meniscus with heal lateral meniscus it is lesser yeah somebody was asking some question well i was i was saying i was saying that the mechanical axis passes through med the the medial joint line actually okay yeah so if we consider that then uh, the But medial the pressure, should be more important when, when you are walking the pressure is more towards the you have a valgus okay. knee right so when you are walking okay. the pressure coming is more on to the lateral side not on to the okay. medial side because in a varus knee it will be more on to the medial side but normally you have a valgus knee right Here, normally we have our knees are around five to seven degrees of valgus, so valgus, yeah. so it is it is uh, uh, more broad. So uh, mostly whenever it possible, you try to repair uh, lateral meniscus. Don't try to remove it. Okay, should we call it a day or should we continue? One hour more than one hour. Valu. Hey sir, so I think this is all very interesting cases, and we are going very rapid. So I think maybe in five minutes. Yeah. Okay. We are we are about to finish. Okay. Yes. So these are uh, because these are the questions which are asked. You know. Um, yes, sir. Uh, repeat. Yeah. I think it looks like a repeat of the previous questions. Yeah, little, yes, little bit. Yeah. Yes, Radiological sir. features suggestive of a ligamentous injury. What does a second fracture suggest? The chronic ACL. Yeah, it suggests a chronic ACL ACL, ACL injury or a tibial spine avulsion. You have. So, if you have an arcuate fracture, that's an arcuate fracture here. so that means a plc is gone so you can ask this here is when what does a reverse sigon fracture you can see the similar thing happening on the medial side right so that is seen in pcl injury same like your sigon fracture PCL. reverse sigon can happen What is this Pellegrini Steda lesion? Yes, sir. It's again seen in the ACL tear yeah. and post MCL avulsion of the tibial side. Maybe MCL avulsion of the tibial side. There's some X-rays. These were so um um. This is one of the favorite questions of my professor. Is so, Um, we'll not That's go a, through all these cases. Less nodular. What is blocking and what are the types of blocking? Somebody wants to say. We'll not go through this because we don't have time. So, what is blocking and what are the types of blocking? What do you mean by blocking of any?
um, knee cannot be extend further but knee can flex locking uh, in locking yeah locking means the knee uh, cannot knee extend extend further yeah but so what are the types of locking true locking and pseudo locking so what is what is true locking what is yeah. pseudo locking in uh, true locking uh, usually by um, bucket handle tear of meniscus menisc- meniscal injuries and in uh, what is the every a- a knee will be locked at a fixed angle a fixed knee, uh, flexion uh, fix, uh, fixed range of the movement uh, can you explain uh, explain it once more um, knee get locked at a particular angle of extension So that means you cannot move it further. <laughs> further flexion is not possible, or further extension. Uh, further extension is not possible. Further flexion, flexion is possible. Flexion is possible. Yeah. So usually the knee that is known as a true locking. The further extension is not lo- possible, and it gets locked in a particular flexion. One cause is meniscal injury. Right. Meniscal injury. Yeah. I mean, whatever bucket handle tear. or where whatever it's a, maybe a flap there which is getting inside what else any other cause of true lock osteophyte no uh, acl cyst yeah acl stem okay. whatever in acl stem you know once you have got an acl which is torn sometimes a big acl stem you no know, it can form like a big cyclops and everything and it can get come in and it can also cause true locking what is pseudo locking um there the knee get locked at uh, different angles each time yeah what happens here what happens here the knee will be locked you cannot do an extension or flexion it will get locked at that particular position for that particular time when will you get the in uh, loose bodies in loose bodies i think we'll uh, i think we'll call it here because all others we have to discuss again this is actually an infection tb knee which we had put then it is a multi ligament injury so we'll call it next time yes sir i think we can discuss i think those are all pretty long discussions yeah it is a long okay. discussion yes yes yeah. So thank you guys. Any any questions? Thank you, you so three, thank you so three much. Three more three more minutes time, and uh, I'm really happy to see people from outside the state also joining us, and uh, hope uh, everybody benefited from this, and we'll have more participants coming in as the nearest exam. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you so much. Night, sir. Thank you, thank you so much. Sir. Thank you for thank the you, sir. Thank you, John sir. Thank you bye thank you thank you everybody have a good night